Elias Howe invents the first practical sewing machine in a dream. We all know that if we sleep on a problem, the solution often presents itself in the morning. And people tend to assume that this is because we have rested the brain and it thus functions better. But dreams have historically provided solutions to problems people have been unable to solve for days, sometimes weeks, sometimes longer. So it was not rest the brain needed, it was inspiration. And dreams can be a most fruitful source of inspiration. There are a surprising number of examples of people obtaining inspiration in dreams. And Elias Howe invented the first practical working sewing machine using the solution shown him in a dream. The sewing machine revolutionized clothes making as it made possible the start of a clothing industry where people could be employed making clothes for other people and also meant that shops could sell ready-made clothes. In some respects this also served to kickstart the fashion industry And despite the fact that today's sewing machines are electronic and are used to mass produce clothes, rather than create intricate or well designed clothes, Ellis Howe's invention, which was received by his dream, is still used in the sewing machine's design. Who was Elias Howe? Elias Howe Jr., July the 9th, 1819 to October the 3rd, 1867, was born in Spencer, Massachusetts. In 1835, aged just 16, he was apprenticed in a textile factory in Lowell. After mill closings due to the Panic of 1837, he moved to Cambridge, Massachusetts to work as a mechanic with carding machinery, apprenticing along with his cousin Nathaniel P. Banks. In 1838, he apprenticed in the shop of Ari Davis, a master mechanic in Cambridge who specialised in the manufacture and repair of chronometers and other precision instruments. It was in the employ of Davis that Howe seized upon the idea of the sewing machine. Howe was not the first to conceive of the idea of a sewing machine. Many other people had formulated the idea of such a machine before him, one as early as 1790. Some had even patented their designs. Howe, however, originated significant refinements to the design concepts of his predecessors. And on September the 10th, 1846, he was awarded the first United States patent, U.S. Patent 4750, for a sewing machine using a lock stitch design. His machine contained the three essential features now common to most modern machines. A needle with the eye at the point, a shuttle operating beneath the cloth to form the lock stitch, and an automatic feed.
the dream that provided the solution. Wayne Morgan Draper, Thomas. The Bemis history and genealogy being an account in greater part of the descendants of Joseph Bemis of Watertown, Massachusetts. The Bemis history and genealogy, Washington, District of Columbia, Library of Congress, Joshua Bemis, FHL, Microfilm, 1011936, Item 2. He almost beggared himself before he discovered where the eye of the needle of the sewing machine should be located. It is probable that there are very few people who know how it came about. His original idea was to follow the model of the ordinary needle and have the eye at the heel. It never occurred to him that it should be placed near the point. And he might have failed altogether if not for a dream. In this dream he was building a sewing machine for a savage king in a strange country. Just as in his actual working experience he was perplexed about the needle's eye. He thought the king gave him 24 hours in which to complete the machine and make it so. If not finished in that time, death was to be the punishment. How worked and worked and puzzled and finally gave it up. Then he thought he was taken out to be executed. He noticed that the warriors carried spears that were pierced near the head. Instantly came the solution of the difficulty and while the inventor was begging for time, he woke. It was four o'clock in the morning. He jumped out of bed, ran to his workshop, and by nine, a needle with an eye at the point had been rudely modelled. After that, it was easy. That is the true story of an important incident in the invention of the sewing machine. The sad finale of the story. Despite securing a patent, Howe had considerable difficulty finding investors in the United States to finance production of his invention. So his elder brother, Amasa B. Miss Howe, travelled to England in October 1846 to seek financing. Amasa was able to sell his first machine for £250 to William Thomas of Cheapside, London, who owned a factory for the manufacture of corsets, umbrellas and valises. Elias and his family joined Amasa in London in 1848, but after business disputes with Thomas and the failing health of his wife, Howe returned, nearly penniless, to the United States. His wife, Elizabeth, who preceded Elias back to the United States, died in Cambridge, Massachusetts, shortly after his return in 1849. Despite his efforts to sell his machine, other entrepreneurs began manufacturing sewing machines. Howe was forced to defend his patent in a court case that lasted from 1849 to 1854. Howe found that Isaac Singer, with cooperation from Walter Hunt, had perfected a facsimile of his machine and was selling it with the same lock stitch that Howe had invented and patented. He won the dispute and earned considerable royalties from Singer and others for sales of his invention. And this is why we think the Singer sewing machine was the first workable sewing machine because Isaac Singer made what Elias Howe had invented. Elias' sewing machine won the gold medal at the Paris Exhibition of 1867, and that same year he was awarded the Légion d'Honneur by Napoleon III for his invention. But Howe died at age 48 
on October the 3rd, 1867, of gout and a blood clot. And Isaac Singer ended his days as a multi-millionaire. <laughs>